In the previous video, we worked on phase one of our interaction, entering the first number for our calculation. Now we can move on to phase two, selecting an operator. So I want to be able to enter a number and then press one of these operator buttons to choose which operation I want to do, plus, minus, multiply, or divide. If we take a look back to how we thought this out, phase two can further be broken down into a bunch of micro steps. When the user presses an operator key, we first change the phase from phase one to phase two. Then the system stores that chosen operator. And then the user can choose a different operator and can continue to choose a different operator without leaving phase two. And it's not until we start entering numbers again that we switch into phase three. I'm going to set up my operator keys in a similar manner to how I did the digit buttons. And that is I'm going to make a component out of all of these. So like I did before, let's take this division one and I'm going to turn divide into a component. And I don't want this to be divide. I'm going to call this operator button. And this one will be for divide. And before I delete this guy, I'm going to copy this one and then delete multiply. And then we'll take this, drag it down to make another copy here. And let's customize this. And we'll call this multiply. And I'm going to repeat this down for the remaining three. And I'm going to include equals in this, even though that's going to be a little bit of a special case and it signifies something else than choosing an operator. But I am going to make it part of this component group. So let's get rid of these three and make copies of these guys. And like we did before, I want to handle tapping on them inside the component itself. So let's go into the component, let's add a trigger, tap, and going to be on the top level, operator button. This time I want to make a decision. I want to handle equals as a special case. So if you press the equals button, I want to send a different message back to the scene than if I press an operator button. So I'm going to make a decision. Condition. If the labels text property equals, and I'm going to use equals, so equals equals, then I'm going to send the message, send to the current scene, and I'm going to send the message equals. Let's duplicate this. Command D. And if it doesn't equal equals, then I'm going to treat this as, as an operator. So I'm not going to send the message equals. I'm instead going to send the message operator. And I'm going to send along the value of the labels text property. And there we go. This component's now done. Let's add a trigger. Receive. From current scene, this message is operator. And I'm just for now, I'm going to assign this directly to this op variable. In a moment, we're going to see why we don't want to do this and we want to assign it to an intermediary variable. But for the moment, I'm going to assign it to here. And I'm going to say receive operator. And once again, I want to make a decision. I only want to take certain actions depending on the phase that I'm in. And if I'm in phase one, then I want to store the operator and then set the phase to phase two. So let's make a condition under here. Condition. Phase equals one. Phase one. We're going to do two things. One, let's update the phase now to phase two. Phase two, assign phase equals two, and let's, we've already stored the operator. We did that here. Okay. Now, if we take a look at our flow diagram, and I'm going to be referring back to the flow diagram more than I am the text thinking that we wrote out because it's going to be equally as valuable. If we take a look at our flow diagram here, we're in phase two. So each of these light blue areas, these represent the phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. I'm in phase two. And phase two says that I can repeatedly choose a different operator and I would remember it each time. It doesn't mean I'm setting up multiple operators. It's just I am switching my choice. So I might choose addition first and then I realize I want subtraction. So I'm going to hit the subtract button after I hit the plus button. And it's just going to cycle through and remember whatever the last one chosen is. I don't move into phase three until I start typing numbers again. So let's take a look at this. Right now I've got this set up. 
I've got this set up that if I'm in phase one, I'm saving the operator that's happening right here, and I'm assigned to phase two. If I hit the operator button again, this is going to fire. It's going to update my operator value, but my phase is not going to update. So let's turn on the debug for operator. Let's put you down here. And if I preview this, we should see. So let's do 25 plus. Notice how my operator is plus. And if I click another one, times, and it updated. And if I hit divide, it updated. OK. Now I'd like to move on to phase three. And this is going to happen when I start entering numbers again. Now, currently, I only do anything with the press digit if I'm in phase one. So this is going to be if I'm in phase two. If I'm in phase two, condition, phase two. I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to update the phase to now phase three, because this is now, if we go back to my flow diagram, I'm now moving into phase three where I'm inputting number B. But I also want to update my variable B. Now, you might think I can do exactly the same thing I want to do here, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to explicitly just update whatever B happens to be with what I've typed in here. I'm starting a new value for variable B. So I'm going to assign to B, and I'm just going to use press digit. I'm not going to do B plus press digit. We're going to do that in the next little part. Here, it's I'm making a new value for B. Doesn't matter what it is, when I enter from phase two into phase three, I'm starting a new value for B. So assign B equals pressed digit. And also note here that I don't have to check if it's a number or a decimal, because this is only going to happen once. Because right here, I'm going to say assign phase three. So it doesn't matter if this is a number or a decimal, this is going to be the first digit of B. Regardless of what it happens to be at the moment, this will always be a new value for B, and this is only going to be the first digit. And then I'm going to update my phase to phase 3. Now that I've updated phase 3, I also want to update my display. But I don't want to update it with A, I now want to update it with B. Let's just copy this guy. Copy, paste, and I'm going to change this from number A to number B. Let's turn on the debug for phase so we can see how this happens. And I'll leave that right just in the top corner, just like this. And let's preview this. Right now we see phase one. And as I continue to enter digits, I remain in phase one. Then if I choose an operator, so let's say I choose times, I'm now in phase two, and I can continually change my operator. And then the second I start typing a new number, so four. Notice how I'm now in phase three. And if I try to type another number right now, I'm not doing anything. Because now that I'm in phase three, I'm not handling anything here for phase three. So I need a phase three. And my phase three is going to look like my phase one. Now I need to tell the difference between a number and a decimal. So let's copy these guys. And I'm going to paste them under here. And let's update this. So this will be for phase three and number. This one will be phase three and decimal. And I'm not looking to see if there's a decimal in A. I need to look to see if there's a decimal in B. So let's change this to index of B. And these ones now have to change as well. So this is going to be B. And this formula changes to B plus press digit. Update display with B. Let's rename these as we go. And my actions under this condition are the same as here. So let's just copy these guys, get rid of these ones, and paste them here. And this should be phase three. There we go. So if I'm in phase three, I'm going to continue to add to B. Let's turn on the debug for B, and we'll put it right here. So that way we can see the value of both of them. All right. So let's take a look at this. 25, I'm putting an A. And then if I do an operator, notice how my phase is now changed to 2. My operator is now plus, And I can continue to change my operator as I go. And then the second I start typing, it's now updating B. I'm seeing the value 58 
in B and A has not been touched. And let's just make sure it's working with the decimals as well. 25.2 plus 63.99. And there we go. We are seeing that the correct values are being put in the right place. All right, our last step is to make a calculation. And we're going to do that when I press the equals button. So let's add a trigger. Receive. And remember, when we set up our operator, we handled equals as a special case. And we're sending equals when the equals button is pressed. So let's go back here to our calculator. And receive from current scene equals. And I don't need to assign anything because this is just a command. Receive equals. If we take a look at our, at our flow chart, there are two possible ways I can make a calculation. Either if I press equals or if I choose an operator after I enter number B. Now both of these are doing more or less the same thing with only a little bit different things that happen just before and just after. But this whole section in the middle where it calculates, displays the result, and then remembers the result in number A, it's the same in both cases. And I don't want this in two places, so I'm going to make this a single place. And if you've seen some of my other tutorials, you know that I do this with send and receive. So I'm going to send to the current scene, and I'm going to call this calculate. And I'm using lowercase here instead of uppercase. And this lets me know that the message I'm sending is to itself. It's not being sent from a component or it's not coming from some external source. So send, calculate. And let's add a trigger here, receive. And this will be for receive, calculate. And now I want to make a decision. I want to check what my current operator is. If it's divide, then I want to do A divided by B. If it's multiply, I want to do A times B. If it's subtract, A minus B. And if it's plus, A plus B. So let's do this. Condition, if operator equals, and I'm just going to copy the value of the label because that's what's being sent through. So if it's divide, condition, divide, then, and if we go back to our flow chart, remember result as number A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign to the variable A the result of the calculation in all in one shot, right here. Assign, select variable, A, and remember, I want to treat these as numbers now that I'm about to do the calculation. So this is going to be number A divided by number B. A equals A divided by B. And then I also want to update the display. And I'm just going to copy this guy because I'm just now going to use the result that's been put into A and I'm just going to put it here. Okay, let's see if that works before we do the rest of the calculations. So let's do 10 divided by 5 equals 2. There we go. We have a working calculation. Okay, let's now do the rest of these. So let's duplicate this. This will be for multiply. So once again, I'm going to copy this character. And this is going to be A times B. And this doesn't change. Let's do this again. This will be for subtract. If operator equals subtract. This will be A minus B. And then the last one will be for addition. Duplicate. This will be for if the value is plus, then I'm going to do a plus b. All right, let's see if all of these work now. Let's do 2 plus 4 equals 6. Good. Let's clear this. Um, 
5 minus 3 equals 2, good. 5 times 9 equals 45, good. And let's do 100 divided by 4 equals 25. Okay, my calculations are working now. We're going to work on follow-on calculations in a moment, but I do want to provide a little bit more feedback. Watch what happens. Watch what happens when I do 25 divided by 5 and then I press equals. Notice how it's doing the calculation and this is the correct calculation and I can even see here my new value for A is 5, but because the previous value in there was 5, I wasn't really seeing some feedback. What I'd like to do is I'd like to flash the display if I hit one of these operator buttons or if I hit the equal button. So let's create a, another receive here. And this receive will be flash display. And I'm going to do just a couple of things here. I'm going to change the opacity of the display object. I'm going to set it to zero, and I'm going to have that happen immediately. And then I'm going to set it back up to 100 after a short delay. So I'll duplicate this, change it to 100, and I'm going to change the start delay to 0 0.1. Okay, and then when I press an operator, I'm just going to put a send right in here. So send, flash display. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm also going to do it when I press equals as well. So let's preview this. 25 divided by 5 equals 5. There we go. I got a little bit of feedback when it did the calculation. And notice too that when I, let's reset this, 14 times. Notice how when I click an operator and it, every time I click one, it's flashing the display. So that's good. That's what I want. At this point, we've completed all four phases of our basic calculation. We enter number A, we choose an operator, enter number B, press the equals button, and that gives us our calculation. In the next video, we're going to improve our calculator to allow follow-on calculations and add all the finishing touches.